Okay guys, I'm going to take the big guy out. Excuse my furry floor. But, here's my craft area. And I have gotten through a lot of it. The more you clean, the more mess you make. So, anyway, what was funny... Oh, I'm going to cover this up so you don't get dizzy. Um, what was funny was this morning... I gotta take you out to see the choke cherry. This morning, I don't know if you can see that little sequin there, right there. There, you can see it. Um, I had, oh, we have more mess out here. Sit, sit, sit. I was playing with Bruno and he brought his toy up and dropped it in my lap. Hang on a second. Sorry about that. I can't hook him up and you're gonna get the you gonna walk yourself? Should we go outside? So he brought his toy and dropped it in my lap and he was looking at me and he had his mouth open and he was panting and he had one of those little sequins on the top of his tooth. It was so funny. I just started laughing and he looked at me and looked at me like what's wrong with you? So it's interesting, these aren't as in bloom as our other tree. So I'll have to show you a little later in the week. Um, here is the other tree that we have. And these are definitely more in bloom. And oh my goodness, do they smell good. And there he goes. Oh, they're gorgeous. They just smell. So wonderful. There he goes. He has his log. And our mosquito eater isn't working very well. We've only had it for a year or two. There. It restarted. Last night it didn't restart for me. Oh, what are you doing? Hi! Hi! So you can see here better how our um, pond works. There's a sump pump and that takes the water up through that line there. That line there, where is it? I can't tell. That line and it feeds it up into that um, maybe I can show you better up here. Feeds it into this system. There uh, was a filtration system in there in that box and it would waterfall into this upper pond and then it would waterfall down here and into the pond. Now I do have old videos of the fish pond when we were actually using it. Where's Chicky? Go get Chicky. Where's Chicky? Go get him. Get Chicky. Get Squeaky. You're just going to eat grass? Our dogs love to eat grass. Boy, it's windy. We normally don't have wind like this. Oh boy, I hope we don't lose any trees. Like we did a couple of years ago. Are you just going to play with your stick? This is where I was sitting the other day, out here in the sun. Today would be a good day because of the wind keeps the mosquitoes away. What do you think? What do you think? Mr. Uh, Gold Tooth? Think you're a hip hop rapper or something with your fancy teeth? Should we get you a grill? Huh? Well, everyone loves seeing you, boo. So it's a beautiful, beautiful Saturday, you guys. And it's nice to be outside. Yesterday, I spent the whole day inside working, uh, purging and packing. No, I don't want you eating that. No, because then your poop ends. Hey! Your poop ends up with uh, wood in it. Come on, Boo. Let's go inside. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Uh, uh. Let's go inside. Bro. He's such a little stinker. Shathead. Come here. Shathead. That's his nickname. Just spell it out. Come here. Come on, let's go. All I have to do is grab his... Come on. 
grab his little short leash. And now I just have to train him. Leave it. Drop. Good boy. Now I just have to train him to put all of his toys back in his toy box. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm off to show you uh, wig hair. Bye. Hey, guys. I was requested by Lisa Barnes to do a video talking about wig care um, and some of the things that she talked about were products, storage, hairspray, you know, and what are some of the products that you need or might want to invest in. So, uh, number one would be a styrofoam wig head or a few wig heads. I think you can get these at Sally Beauty for about five dollars. I have a few of them and they're really nice just to store your wigs on. Um, it keeps the shape and if you want to work on your wig something like this is great. Like if you need to, I don't know, I don't know what you're going to do with it. Uh, but if you're going to work on your wig like maybe trim it a little bit. It's ideal to trim any wig or hair piece when it's on your head but sometimes that's not feasible like for me I can't trim the back of mine um, when it's on my head so I put it on my wig head and then I stick the pin in and I have several pins and so and you can pin it in different locations and that will keep it sturdy and then I have a wig stand over there if you can see that so that's where I keep this particular head. Um, as far as shampooing goes, whoa, I know that the manufacturers and the people who sell wigs such as Vogue and wigs.com, they recommend a wig shampoo. Now, I don't know that that's necessarily vital to the health of your wig. It's a synthetic fiber which I consider to be like a fabric to some degree um, but I do have this wig control shampoo it smells like coconuts it's very nice uh, it says conditions moisturizes softens helps extend the life of the wig it's a pink color you can get this at Sally Beauty and it smells like coconuts and it works very well so I do have a video I believe showing how to wash a wig but the directions are add a cap full of control wig shampoo to a basin of cool to lukewarm water gently swish lifting the hairpiece up and down to remove all traces of dirt and oils towel blot or shake to remove excess water rinse thoroughly spray with control wig spray and place on a stand to dry brush into desired style after the hair is completely dry. That's very important. You don't want to stretch or damage or fray the, the fibers. Um, so I also, in addition to doing that, because I wear makeup, I will get in here and just really kind of scrub this part a little bit, you know, just to, I mean gently, but just to get any makeup or sweat off of the inner cap. Um, then there are different conditioning sprays that you can use. One is Henry Margot, the other one is John Renault, and these are really helpful to keep the fibers soft and um, tangle free. It's kind of like using a fabric softener, and in fact Wendy Smith here on YouTube who wears wigs, she uses a fabric softener that she dilutes into a spray bottle, one part water, one part fabric softener. And she said that the thing that's really important is that you like the scent of it. She said she tried different downy ones, different fabric softeners, and she felt that the she didn't like the scent and that it was too strong. Um, so she found a Suave Tell fabric softener that she likes. I'm not sure where she got it. But after you've washed your wig, I wash it, rinse it really well, I put it in a, in a bath towel and kind of in, fold the towel over it and just kind of press on it, get the extra water out. If it's a shorter wig or you know like one of my wig pieces, I'll go ahead and shake it a little bit just to get the extra moisture off. But if it's a long one or a real curly one, I don't recommend that you shake it because um, you can cause it to get tangled. And they look pretty ugly once they are washed and ready to hang up to dry. Then I recommend getting a stand like this. 
because this will allow the air to circulate. These are not expensive. Um, they allow the, the air to circulate through, dry the cap quicker, and it helps to maintain the shape of your hairpiece or wig. Um, I do have Paul Young hairspray specifically made for synthetic hair. Again, I'm not really sure how truly important that is. Um, I believe these are alcohol free. No, first ingredient is SD alcohol 40. Um, so I'm not really sure what the benefit is to using an actual wig hairspray. I don't use a lot of styling products on my hair pieces, my wigs are my top piece. Um, so pretty much if I spray anything, if it's really windy out, I'll just kind of spray this part of my own natural hair. Um, so I, I don't know, I guess you can try. Um, if you need to use a hairspray, you can try what you have. Uh, it depends on how often you're going to wear your wig and, um, yeah. Uh, wig clips, these are nice to sew into your wig or hairpiece. If you feel that you need um, some pretty good security and you have a decent amount of hair, these are easier to sew in. You just sew them in like on the four corners um, and that's all you have to do. Um, for other wig security, there are a couple of different options. I mean, you can wear bobby pins if you want to. Um, but you can get something like the wig grip. This one I got off of Amazon. This is actually, I guess, a trademark name or copy. Well, it wouldn't be copyright, would it? It would be a trademark, right? This is the Milano wig grip and it has Velcro here and you put it around your hair and with this one you leave the label out. You put it around your head like a headband and then this keeps um, your wig from slipping. So really nice. And then this is an, a no-name one that I had gotten off of Etsy. They both work just fine. <clears throat> Recently Wigging Out was telling me about um, the It Stays roll-on and I did have a bottle of that I don't know, a couple of years ago, and I'm not sure what happened to it. I may have thrown it away. So I went to our uh, medical supply place, and they have the German brand Juzo. Um, and what it is, it's a, a skin adhesive, and it comes in a roller ball like a deodorant, and you roll it on, and it leaves an adhesive surface that your wig will stick to. Um, you can play around with the placement. You can put it, you know, like just right in here. And it really does work. Um, smell? Mm, not so much. It kind of has a celery, chemical celery smell. But it does work and it comes off with water. So all you need is water to remove it. These are made for compression stockings and um, I think that it stays, actually says it's for wigs and toupees. So that's another option, or you can use, you know, bobby pins or other clips if you want to. Um, let's see, storage. Uh, a lot of my wigs I had stored in Ziploc bags, and when I took them out, they smelled funky. So I don't recommend that. I recommend um, either putting them on a wig head, storing them on a wig head, or in the box that they come in. And if they don't come in a box, just get you know, some type of a paper cardboard box um, because I think that keeps the funk from growing. Yeah, I was surprised when I took some of them out because I know that my, you know, I keep my wigs clean. And um, so as far as shampooing goes, I think it's recommended uh, every 20 to 30 times that you wear it. But of course, that's going to depend on how much you sweat. If you're wearing it to work out in, you might want to um, at least rinse it. Uh, you don't want to wash it, you want to wash it as infrequently as possible to help preserve the hair fibers because the more you wash it, the more um, wear and tear you're going to have. And so the experts or the manufacturers recommend every 
20 to 30 times you wear it. And again, I say that just really kind of depends on you. If you have a really oily scalp or you sweat a lot or, you know, you get a lot of makeup on the cap, you may want to at least spot clean that part or rinse it out with cool or lukewarm water. Now, if you have a, a wig or a hair piece that's super shiny, you can um, dull the shine down with Okay, it wasn't watching the time, so I don't know where it cut off, but um, I was talking about uh, if you have a lot of shine in your wig or your hair piece, you can get a dry shampoo. This is Oscar Blondie, and it is just a white powder that pours into your hand, and you can just spread it around and then pat it on your wig if it's too shiny. And then you just kind of fluff it out with your fingers. You can brush through it if you want to. And this is my favorite dry shampoo. Now this is the blonde color and this I actually, I actually, I use on my natural hair and that's the color of it there. So you can also use a spray dry shampoo if you want to, to help dull. As it dries you can see it leaves a, a powdery there you can see how powdery it is. So that will dull the shine down also um, if you think it's too shiny. And wearing it and washing it will dull the shine as well. That just happens over time. So I'm just going to look at my list here. Oh, one thing I did forget. You always want to use a wide tooth comb on your, on your wigs. And that is... If you have a longer wig, curly wig, that is really tangled, go ahead and finger comb it first instead of going in with a comb. Um, if it has a lot of tangles, especially because they get tangly here underneath at the nape where it rubs on your clothes, um, you can go ahead and use your spray here. Um, let it dry, then go through and either finger comb it or go through with your wide tooth comb and work the tangles out. And as with human hair, if you start at the bottom and work the tangles out, that's best. Because if you start up here and it's real tangly and you do that, you're going to lock some of those tangles in and it's going to make it even harder. So make sure you start from the bottom and work up. Now, I don't really have any curly wigs. So I'm not the expert on that. Um, might want to talk to uh, Lisa, Bella Beauty in Pink. She wears a lot of curly wigs. Wendy Smith. Um, who else? Min Pam. I'm sorry if I'm forgetting somebody. Because um, I know that Jeannie and Wigan Out, they wear wavy, straight to wavy. Your style's not real curly. Um, and then as far as uh, heat, um, oh, I didn't bring it out. Hang on. Where is it? For heat, if it's a heat safe wig, it will tell you that it'll be Futura Fiber or the HD Heat Defiant from John Renault. Um, and then just follow the directions. I really don't recommend using a lot of heat on your wig. Buy it in the style that you want. Um, I mean, you know, you can um, smooth out a synthetic wig by using a steamer. There are several videos on YouTube, so if you're interested in that, check that out. If, it, if they start to get pretty ratty looking and frizzy, you can uh, smooth out a synthetic wig with steam. Patty from Patty's Pearls. Um, she has a video and I've seen other ones. But this is, Jeannie recommended this, and this is an old one, and it has missing teeth, because I used to use this in my natural hair. But you can use this on a synthetic wig. Uh, just be careful. It's not going to get super hot. It's not going to get like a flat iron. But you can, I did that to, um, oh, which is the one that I got from Ginger. In the color Sunny. Come on, Joan. The John Renault. Anyway, that's what I did to kind of give the bangs a little bump. So you can use something like this. Um, human hair wigs, I really... I don't own any. I don't really know if there's any thing that you have to do to be real careful. I know that, you know, they're human hair, so you can use heat on them. 
um, but I would assume that you have to be pretty careful. You don't want to be pulling the hairs out, especially if it's a, a monotop. <clears throat> you don't want to be pulling the knots out of that. Um, so I am not the person to ask about human hair wigs. Um, even though I'm a hairstylist, I've never really used them. So we went through shampooing, comb, wide tooth comb, or your fingers, a wig stand, either the styrofoam. You can dry it on the styrofoam head. It will just take longer. Um, for the cap to dry, the hair dries pretty fast. A conditioning spray, heat, hairspray, storage, and I wrote down human hair. And then we talked about adhesives and clips and securing the wig. So I think I covered all the points that I wanted to, the points that you had addressed. And yeah well let me know if you have any more questions or if i miss something and um i'd be happy to do a follow-up video and let you know and i think i have a video showing me washing a wig if i do i'll link it below and hmm, there was another one i was thinking of linking but i forgot <laughs> okay you guys well i hope you have a wonderful weekend today is saturday i have to go out to sam's club and <clears throat> allergies and oh, I'll be so glad to get out of here. It's beautiful. I should go out and film the uh, the choke cherry blossoms, you guys. Maybe I'll put that at the beginning of the video. So you guys have a wonderful weekend, and I will just talk to you later. Thanks a lot. Bye.